That's it, girls. Keep pulling. One Sunday, when Charlie was going to fly his hot air balloon, Millie and Molly offered to help him set up. Now, you two come back here, please, and I can start to inflate her. <laughs> That's the way, girls. Thanks for helping. <laughs> Millie, you hold up this, and Molly, you hold the other side open. Then I can get some air into the balloon. Charlie, where did you get your nice strappy pants? We like stripes, especially if they have yellow in them. Made them from the old balloon! Did your old balloon wear out? No! Crashed it into a tree! Ripped it to bits! Nearly did myself a mischief! Oh, you girls thought about coming up with me? No, could we? Ask your parents! We could go up over the mountain! Be a big adventure! Over the mountain? Now look the other way! The flame's hot! Firing! Right, here we go! Cast off! Bye, Charlie! Have a good trip! Don't forget my offer now! Next Sunday, if you like! Wow! Think what you could see from up there! And... and what's over the mountain? Could be really, really exciting! Yeah, could be. Let's play on the swings. Okay. Millie started to think about the balloon and what exciting things there might be on the other side of the mountain. The balloon landed in the wild jungle on the other side of the mountain. And we saw lots of strange animals with big teeth that people had never seen before. And flowers with every colour in the rainbow. The end. Thank you, Millie. A very exciting story indeed. No, we're going to have a different sort of adventure. Dinosaurs from outer space! <laughs> oh, <laughs> much more exciting than that. We're going to have an adventure with... Spelling! Oh. Oh, no, but don't... Millie wasn't thinking about spelling. She couldn't think about anything except what adventures she'd have on the other side of the mountain. Millie, time to feed marmalade. Do I have to? Yes, you have to. The same as you do every night. I bet the people who live on the other side of the mountain don't have to feed their pets. Yes, but sadly you live on this side of the mountain, in a nice, warm, safe house with your mum and dad who love you and look after you. It's not very exciting. Lots of people would be very thankful for what you have. I suppose. Oh, did I tell you? Charlie said we can go up in the balloon, if you said it was all right. Please? Well, as long as Molly is allowed to go too. Yay! Hey, where are you going? I'm ringing Molly now. You can't ring her now, it's too late. Besides, you still haven't fed poor Marmalade. And you promised to tidy your room before you went to bed. Okay. Can't I do it tomorrow? People who live on this side of the mountain have to do it tonight. Mm-hmm. Here you are, Marmalade. Ah, oh, this is empty. So what do you think, Molly? I don't really want to go up in the balloon. But we'll see all sorts of things. Up over the mountain. Who knows what's over there? Can't we just play in the park? Maybe we could even get pants like Charlie. Don't you remember how he got them? He crashed his balloon. But it'll be an adventure. We could send Dolly and Jemima. Molly, I want to stay here. But that's boring. You didn't think it was boring before you saw Charlie fly the mountain. Please, Molly, I know you're scared. I'm not scared. But Mum and Dad won't let me go unless you come with me. You could find someone else. No, I want you. Why? Because you're my very best friend. The next Sunday, Molly tried to be as brave as she could be, Lady girls. so her very best friend Millie could have the adventure she so wanted. Mm. Are we definitely going over the mountain? Looks like the wind's blowing the right way. Oh, Molly, isn't it exciting? Yeah. Could Tomcat come too? 
to keep Molly company. The more, the merrier. But then Marmalade would be lonely. Oh, then all right. They both can come. Yay! <laughs> Soon the balloon was ready with everyone on board. Cast off! Firing! Hold on, you two. Good luck. You'll be all right, Molly. Just do what Charlie tells you to. Oh, Mummy. Good luck. See if you can see our house. Have fun. Bye, Molly. Bye. Do what you're told now. Look, Molly. I can see the school. And the night. Oh, and I can see my house. Up here. All the ordinary things suddenly don't look so ordinary from up here. Look at all the red roofs. And look at the river. It's so curly and blue and pretty. All the trees are in such straight rows. Everything looks like toys. <laughs> Thanks for coming with me, Molly. It doesn't seem so scary once you get up here. Nothing to be scared about. I've been flying these things for 30 years. I'm still here. Mountain's coming up. How long can we see what's on the other side? Not long, but I have to give the burners a big blast to make sure we get over all right. I look for another wind going the direction we want. Sometimes it's higher, sometimes it's lower. Uh -huh. There, the other side of the mountain. Oh, is this it? Beautiful, ain't it? Um, I suppose, but... Well, the trees are pretty, and the rocks. Yeah, but I was expecting something more interesting. Even our town is more interesting and pretty than this. Charlie, Charlie, why are we going up so quickly? Just hang on now. What's happening? The wind's got us. Hang on very tightly now, and don't let go. Can we please go home now, Charlie? Please, Charlie, find another wind to take us back. We'll have to go higher. Yes, it's the only way to find a wind that takes us the other way back home. Hold on tight! When we come down through the clouds and see the town below. Any minute now. Hey! There! Look! There's our side of the mountain! Hooray! Our troubles ain't over yet! What? I've only got a little bit of fuel for the burners. It's going to be a fast trip down. Not just yet. Have to leave it till the last moment. My tummy's turning inside out. I wish I was at my nice house with Mummy and Daddy. No, Tom Cat, be brave. Charlie knows what he's doing. He's been flying the loop for 30 years. All right, I'm going to use the last of the fuel to slow us down. It'll still be a bumpy landing. Is everyone all right? I... I think so. I'm all right, and so is Tomcat. Marmalade? Where's Marmalade? Maybe she jumped out when I wasn't looking. Mm -hmm. Marmalade! 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 Marmalade? Oh, poor 
marmalade. You must have been so frightened. But Charlie's been buying these things for 30 years. <laughs> yeah, nearly had me another pair of pants today. So, gonna come up with me again next week? Um, no thanks, Charlie. It was a big adventure, but we like our side of the mountain best. Don't we, Molly? Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Millie, time to feed marmalade. I already have. Without being asked? Well, something is definitely wrong. Someone's been into Millie's room and tidied up everything. Dad, I did it. <gasps> <laughs> What's all this about? Nothing. But it wasn't nothing. It was very definitely something. Millie was very thankful for what she had. And very happy to play with Jemima and Dolly and her best friend Molly. While other people went to find out what was on the other side of the mountain. Molly loves her home and her Dolly. But Molly really loves her pet Tomcat. What are you doing Tomcat? Despite his bad taste in gifts. And Millie really loves her pet marmalade too. Despite the tricks that naughty cat gets up to. Hello, marmalade. You haven't seen my other shoe, have you? It must be under here somewhere. There it is. <coughs> marmalade. <laughs> oh, marmalade, you're such a naughty, naughty pussy cat. But not everyone loves cats as much. Millie's dad puts up with Marmalade because he knows Millie loves that cat. <sighs> Millie, can you come and get your pet out of my chair? Again? Sorry, Dad. Come on, Marmalade. You've got your own basket to sleep in. <laughs> and make sure her toys go with her. I'm back! But most of the time, Millie's able to save Marmalade from getting into too much trouble. Uh, am I near the table yet? Stop! What? Nothing. I wasn't going to trip over your cat, was I? Oh, no. <laughs> Just as well. <sighs> but one day, Millie's dad's tolerance for Marmalade started to break down. Are you there? Has anyone seen my other lucky sock? Have you lost it? Lucky sock? Yes, Molly. Millie's dad has a big important business meeting tomorrow. He's got to wear his lucky socks. <laughs> Doesn't your dad have lucky socks? <laughs> I don't think so. Well, I do. I was wearing them when I met Millie's mum. And I was wearing them when Millie was born. Good things happen when I wear my lucky socks. Of course, I wasn't wearing my lucky socks when we picked out Marmalade. Mama Lane, get off Dad's chair. So for my big meeting tomorrow, I'll need my best shirt, my nicest trousers and both my lucky socks. Can I iron a shirt? I'll help. All right. And I've just remembered where that sock might be. Hmm. Nope. Nah. No. Nada. Nix. Nine. Nothing. Ah. <laughs> Marmalade! Ah! No! No. Every coloured sock except blue. Just keep the iron moving, otherwise you'll burn a hole in Dad's favourite pants. Then what'll he wear tomorrow? When you finish that leg, Millie, Molly can do the other. OK! Still can't find that sock. What happened to your head? That cat again. We've nearly finished ironing your best trousers for your important meeting. And we've already ironed your favourite shirt. It's over there. Oh, Marmalade! Marmalade, don't wash yourself in Dad's shirt. That cat! Don't worry. We've got time to wash and iron it again before tomorrow. Oh, OK. The pants! Your best pants! Oh, no! They're burnt! <laughs> 
My best pants. What about my meeting? Well, there's always your second best pants. Yeah. It wasn't your fault, Millie. Marmalade's to blame. Again. <coughs> I'll definitely need my lucky socks now. Right. There'll be a hug for anyone who can find my missing lucky sock. We'll find it. Yeah, we'll help. Only sheets over here. Can you see any socks? Lots and lots. Green, red, purple, pink, brown. Any blue lucky socks? We only need one. No, not one blue lucky sock. Any luck? One lucky sock? One? That's worse than none. One lucky sock is bad luck. I have to have two lucky socks to give me good luck. Look how much bad luck I've had already today. No! No! <gasps> Marmalade! This ice will keep the swelling down. Does it hurt, Dad? Only when I breathe. Well, don't worry, because we'll find that sock. We could ask everyone in town. That's a good idea, Molly. It could have blown off the line. Anyone could have it and not know who it belongs to. Or how important it is. Don't worry, Dad. We'll get your luck back before tomorrow. Thanks. <laughs> so, while Millie and Molly went looking throughout the whole town, Millie's dad continued to hunt around the house for his missing lucky sock. Hmm... But without Millie around, Marmalade was going to get into more trouble. No! Marmalade! Lost a sock, eh? I have a similar problem. I think all the lost socks go to sock heaven. While Millie and Molly thought the idea of a sock heaven was funny, they were still worried that they wouldn't find that missing sock before tomorrow. Good luck! Please, Aunt Maud. They asked Aunt Maud, politely, to lift her skirt. No. The butcher's socks came up to his knees. No. And Farmer Hegarty's socks looked far too big and woolly. No. And Miss Blythe didn't even have socks. Well, socks make my feet itchy. Millie and Molly wondered if the lost sock could ever be found. Sorry, Dad. We asked everyone in town. The day's nearly gone. I need that sock for tomorrow. Where is it? Just take a minute to think where you put it. That sock's got to be somewhere. You're right. Just a minute or two. I need to relax. No! No, 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 no. Stupid cat! But you sat on her! She was sitting in my chair! That's it! Come here! Marmalade, you're going outside! But... And if she causes one more problem, she's not coming back in, ever. That night, Molly stayed over at Millie's house to keep her company. Since Marmalade wasn't allowed in. Poor Marmalade. She wants to come in. You heard, Dad. She is not allowed. Sorry, Marmalade. See you in the morning. While Marmalade tried to get to Millie, Millie's dad couldn't sleep. His important meeting was the next morning, and he wouldn't be able to wear his lucky socks. Why don't you go and have a warm drink? Might help you sleep. You need to be rested for your meeting. Yes, I guess so.
don't be rash. Please, Dad. That's it. The cat goes outside forever. But Marmalade was only trying to get to me. Sorry, Millie. Marmalade has used up her nine lives. But Marmalade is my pet. I'm not saying you can't have a cat, but from now on, I don't want it getting under my feet, sitting on my chair or taking a bath on my shirts. Right. Where's your basket, Marmalade? It's going in the shed. The shed? Please, Dad, can't Marmalade sleep in my bedroom? We'll close the door and... Look! <gasps> my sock! My sock! My lucky sock! <laughs> Marmalade had it all along. She must have been using it to keep warm. Don't be cross with Marmalade. Cross? <laughs> I'm not cross. I'm thrilled. I now have both my lucky socks. Does this mean that Marmalade gets the hug? She found the sock. Shh. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I guess she does. Here. Good Marmalade. <laughs> Well, I never thought I'd see that. <laughs> <laughs> the next day, Millie's dad was ready for his big meeting. Good luck! Yeah, good luck, Dad. Fingers crossed. Thanks, everyone. But I won't need your luck. Not when I'm wearing these. <laughs> 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 Millie was glad for her dad. She knew his important meeting would go well. But she was also glad that Marmalade wasn't in trouble anymore. At least, not for the moment. <coughs> Millie and Molly were camping with Millie's family on Farmer Hegarty's farm. Today, they were heading off on a great adventure. You look great, Molly. They hadn't decided which kind of adventure. But they were dressed for anything. Oh, very, uh, stylish. No, Dad. We're going on an adventure. OK, but don't stray too far from camp. Mum, we'll be OK. We know our way around here. Farmer Hegarty's farm isn't dangerous. <laughs> Not at all. I don't know. There's the tickle bears to watch out for. Tickle bears? What are they? It's OK, Molly. Dad's only teasing. Tickle bears aren't real. Oh? Not real? How do you know that? Well, um, I've never seen one. You haven't seen a polar bear either. But you know they're real. Oh. Yeah, but tickle bears sound too silly. And even if they are real, something that tickles you can't be very scary. You mean they're a bit like teddy bears? Probably. Let's go, Molly. I've got an idea for our adventure. Let's go on a tickle bear hunt. But what if we find one? Then we'll take a photo of it and be famous. <laughs> yeah. Millie and Molly decided the best way to find a tickle bear was to set a trap. Not the kind that would hurt a tickle bear, just stop it for long enough to get a photo. There. Now if anything trips over this fishing line, the net will fall on top of it. All we need is some bait to bring the tickle bears out of the woods. Here, the cake we made last week. I suppose tickle bears don't mind snail cake. They'll love it. Race it to the end of the track. <laughs> Tickle bears. There might be, yeah. And just because you've never seen one doesn't mean they aren't real. <laughs> That's so dumb. Are you camping on the farm too? Yeah. Come on, Tom. Let's go and play soccer. We don't want the tickle bears to get us. <laughs> <laughs> what do they know? Anyway, here's a good hiding spot. We just have to wait. Like the tickle bears. I don't know, like very little bears with long fingers for tickling. <laughs> no, please. But really, why haven't we ever seen one before? They must be good at hiding. Yes, they are. And 
tickling. <laughs> huh? Shh. What was that? Over here, Molly. Wow. Big footprint. Looks like some kind of animal's been passed. Yeah, but what kind? This footprint is really weird. I mean, look at the long toes. It could be a tickle bear print. I'll take a picture of it. I didn't think tickle bears would have feet this big. Aren't they like teddy bears? You know, cute, cuddly, and little? Mm, me either. But don't worry. They're probably just cute, cuddly, big teddy bears. Look! <gasps> a whole trail of them! Let's follow it. We might find a tickle bear. Oh boy, I just hope it's not too big. While Millie was becoming more and more excited by the chance of spotting a real live tickle bear... Look at these hairs, Molly! Molly was becoming rather nervous about it. Tickle bear hairs? Yep, I'd say so. It must have brushed past this bush and left them behind. Oh, the kinds are rough and prickly. I thought tickle bears would have, you know, soft, cuddly teddy bear fur. Mmm, me too. But don't worry, they're probably just from his tail. Let's go. Oh boy, huge and with a rough prickly tail. The further they went, the less Molly felt like meeting this tickle bear. Look at that. Mmm. Don't tell me. Tickle bear droppings. Time for another picture. No way. Yuck. Billy, this isn't fun. These tickle bears don't seem very nice and... <gasps> oh! Giant footprint! Millie! Look, Millie! The daddy tickle bear's been here! Millie? Millie? Where are you? Oh no! The tickle bears have got Millie! 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 Ready? <laughs> 
just got the wind, there's something out there. Let's go and see. Nothing there. Jack, you don't think it's a tickle bear, do you? Of course not. But we'd better go back to camp, just in case. Some of the bristles. <laughs> huh? huh? Shh, what's that? Please don't say a tickle bear. Stop it with the tickle bear nonsense. It's not. Oh. But what is it? Whatever it is, it sounds scary. Let's go back to camp. Yeah. Okay. It's coming from over near the trap. I'm going to look. Anyone else coming? me out of this mess? Sure. What a tangle. There you go. What are you doing here, Dad? I was collecting firewood, then I noticed this cake on the ground all wrapped up, so I picked it up. Hey, the tickle bear trap worked, Millie. Tickle bear trap? <laughs> well, I suppose it serves me right for telling stories. Aha. Uh -huh. So tickle bears aren't real, then? Well, I've never seen one. As it turned out, Millie did take a great photo that day. And while it mightn't make her and Molly into famous adventurers, it was certain to make them laugh for a long, long time. Everyone was excited when Miss Blythe announced that Millie and Molly's class was going on a field trip to the forest. And you'll collect specimens and draw pictures of birds and plants. Wow! I get to be an explorer! I can find some ways to my collection! Get these permission notes signed and on Monday we'll all catch the ferry across the river. <laughs> it was then that Molly's enthusiasm for the field trip suddenly, mysteriously disappeared. Miss Blythe, do we all have to go on the field trip? Yes, of course. It's part of your schoolwork. Oh, um, it's just, um, I might have to do something else on Monday. And what's that? Um, just something really important, maybe. But the next day, when it was time to hand in the permission note, Molly still hadn't found an excuse not to go on the field trip. Warm clothes and comfortable shoes. Molly! Molly, your permission note. I can't give it to you. Why not? It's... it's... the fairy. What about the fairy? It's too... too... what? Too, um... scary. <laughs> Molly's scared of the fairy. <laughs> Chloe, perhaps you'd like to stand up and share your funny joke with the whole class. But no, Miss Blythe. Right here. <gasps> so we'll see you all bright and early Monday. Poor Molly. But lucky Molly had a very clever friend, Millie. <gasps> it's all right, Molly. It's safe. You've been on the ferry before, but only when it was tied up. Now, lass, I promise I'll take my ferry only out a little ways, not right out into the river, until you're used to it. But I'll be right beside you all the way, Molly. Ooh. All right. 
So over the next couple of days, Millie sat beside Molly on the ferry. The first day, the ferryman took the ferry just a short way out into the river. The second day, the ferryman took the ferry just a little further out into the river. Here, lass, you pay attention to Boatswain and don't go fretting about what the ferry's doing. Yeah, give Boatswain a good pat. The third day was the day of the field trip. Molly hoped that she would be able to cross the river from one side to the other without being too frightened. Binoculars and a magnifying glass and a compass. It's only a day trip. Why do you need all that stuff? All aboard! Molly, are you ready for your big voyage, matey? Uh, um... Come on, Molly. Molly, take a look at how the water sparkles. No, thank you very much. Both of these cutting. Go on, Molly. You can do it. The river is so beautiful. Go on, Molly. Yeah, you can do it. Ready. See, lass? We're over halfway across the river. <laughs> Good on you, lass. You're no longer a landlubber. You did it. And you were right beside me all the way, Millie. <laughs> With the ferry trip behind them, the whole class was soon exploring the forest. You know, they're a fungus. It's so pretty. And so is this leaf. Here, use my magnifying glass. I'm going to put it in my collection. Suddenly, the unexpected oh. happened. Oh, what was that? Oh, oh dear. It's alien zomping monster spaceships. It's just a bit of thunder. Oh, and some rain too. Oh, dear me. Quick six people, oh, gather round. We'll have to take shelter somewhere, but there's nowhere out here in these woods with a roof. Miss Fly, Farmer Hegarty's barn is near here. See? Oh, yes, just beyond the trees. Thank you, Millie. Soon everyone was safe, sheltering in Farmer Hegarty's barn, because they couldn't all fit in his house. We'll just stay here a wee while till the rain eases, and we can all go home. Sorry, Miss Fly. But no one's going anywhere in a hurry. Oh, no. <gasps> Why ever not? The rain's so heavy, the river's flowing too fast for the ferry to cross. Wow! This is exactly what happens to real explorers. Listen. The rain's stopping. Oh, 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 oh I like the rain. rain. So my mum and dad can just drive over the bridge and get me? No. The bridge upstream has collapsed from the floodwaters. We'll all have to stay the night right here. Come on now, everyone. A little bit of shush. Millie? Molly and I stayed the night in the barn before. It's great fun, really. I'm sure it will be quite an adventure. I've got to go and secure the ferry. Farmer Hegarty's given me this rope. And as for Boson, Molly, keep an eye on me first, mate. He's down the night in the barn. Right to you. Thank you, officer. Now, people, I've just spoken to the policeman and he's telling all your families that we're staying the night. What do we sleep on? What do we eat? Oh, you'll be as snug as bugs in these rugs. Farmer Hegarty, thank you. That's grand. And I'm going to set up a barbecue and cook sausages. Got any dinosaur blood? Oh, dinosaur blood? Tomato sauce. I like lots and lots of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't need that. 
It gets pretty chilly in here. Because I'm not staying the night. Storms made it very dark out. Chloe, where are you going? Chloe! I'm going home! Chloe, come back! Oh, dear. I don't know my way around here well enough to go after her. I could go after her. Oh, thank you, but no. Chloe's upset about something. It'd be better if it were me. Molly and I could come with you, Miss Blythe. We know our way around the farm, and I've got my compass. The river was wild and angry when Chloe reached its banks, and nothing like the gently flowing waters they'd crossed earlier that day. Get back from the bank, lass! It's dangerous! The river's washing the bank away! No! It's got to take you across the river! Now! The ferry isn't going anywhere! Go back! Molly saw that something was frightening Chloe, just like the fairy had frightened her. Chloe, is there something that you're worried about? Something back at the barn? No! When they told Millie about being scared of the fairy, it helped me be brave. It's going to pour again, and any more rain on these banks and they'll collapse. Chloe, you don't have to be scared all by yourself. Tell me what's Molly's right. A problem shared is a problem hard. Really? Really? Come on, last your friends, right? day, the river had subsided. Molly enjoyed her trip back on the ferry even more than the trip over. Nothing was too scary when you had a friend by your side and a cat on your lap. <laughs> Some days, Millie and Molly liked a quiet picnic. Would you like another cup of tea, Dolly? Not every game had to be running around and noisy. Woo! Woo! -hoo, here I come! Yeah, look out, everyone! Yeah! Humphrey! Look at all the dirt you put in our picnic! Do you like my new bike? I just got it! It's got the loudest bell ever! Humphrey! <coughs> now look what you've done! Bogle. It's only Humphrey. Do you like it? It's nice, Humphrey. It's racing car red, so it goes really, really fast. And it's got big tyres, so we can go on the dirt and on the moon. I'm going to show everyone. But don't ring your bell so much. It upsets all the animals. You mean like this? Humphrey. 
Later that day, Millie and Molly decided to visit Farmer Hegarty and help him around the farm. Some of the animals were cute. <laughs> Some of the animals were mischievous. What are you two laughing at? Huh? Hey! <laughs> And some of the animals were scary. Hurry up, Farmer Hegarty! Don't worry, Molly. Beefy won't do anything unless he gets a fly. Yeehaw! Huh? Yeah, I'm the king of the country! Whoops! Time to go! Nearly got me. That was lucky. I don't like Beefy. I hate him. Now, Molly, it's all right. Don't hate Beefy. He's just a big old bull who gets cranky when things upset him. But he tried to get you. <laughs> he's been trying for years. I'm still here. I know what he's like. I know I can't trust him, so everything is fine now. Can we go somewhere else? Sure. In fact, I've a couple of special animals you haven't met before. How does that sound? Yes, please. Come on, Molly. All right. Up you come. See those two horses? That's Salt and Pepper. Can you guess how they got their names? That's what they look like. One's light, like salt, and the other one is dark. Like Pepper. Right. Like Millie and me. <laughs> I'm Salt. I'm Pepper. And those horses are the best of friends, too. <laughs> Shall we go and meet them? Yes, please. We thank you very much. There's nothing to be afraid of, Molly. These lovely beasts aren't like Beefy. They're gentle and trustworthy. But they're big. <laughs> so am I. You're not afraid of me, are you? <laughs> no, of course not. All right, then. Hello, Horsey. Hello. I'm Millie. Steady I'm... on, Millie. They have to learn to trust you. Molly? Don't worry. They're more frightened of you than you are of them. Really? Sure. Once they get to know you and understand you want to be their friends, well, they'll be your friends for life. Come on. Come and stand with Millie. Just stay here a moment. <laughs> oh, look at them! <laughs> Come over and meet them, but slowly, so you don't frighten them away again. Come on, Molly. I'll watch from over here. Come on! Nothing to worry about, only never walk behind a horse. Always let them know where you are. Don't get too close to their feet because they can tread on you accidentally. Can we go now? Sure. Enough for today. Over the next few visits, Millie and Molly learned how to earn the trust of the horses. Now make sure you hold the apple with a flat hand. You don't want old salt to nibble your thumb by accident. <laughs> now give him another bit of apple. Now pat him and say something quietly to him. Good boy, Sol. You like apple, don't you? Yes. Don't be afraid. Make him go away. He just wants an apple too. Open your hand flat like Millie did. Pat him. Good horsey. Should I give him another apple? I think you'd be making a friend if you do. Good horsey. Good pepper. You like apple, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> it only took a couple of visits before Millie and even Molly trusted salt and pepper enough to get up on their backs. See? Now they trust you, you can trust them. I'm going to run! No, you won't. Just grab this bit of mane and hang on tight, but don't let go of the reins. See, there's nothing to be afraid of. A few days later, they were even riding by themselves. This is fun! 
fun. Can we take them onto the road? We don't have to. Of course you can. No cars around here. Take them for a ride up over that hill. But don't take them too close to the freeway. Noises like trucks and cars can frighten horses. We could just stay here. Oh, come on, Molly. It'll be fun. Just remember, salt and pepper will clip-clop out, but they'll always clippity-clop home. It's the clippity that'll bounce you off. Hang on tightly coming home and keep them away from loud noises. We will. Have fun. I'll wait here and mend this fence. Even though Farmer Hegarty trusted Salt and Pepper, Molly still wasn't sure as they clip-clopped along. We won't go too far, will we? No, not too far. Millie, Molly, Millie, Molly! Don't shout! You'll frighten the horses! Soon Jack and Harry were riding on Salt and Pepper too, and the old horses didn't seem to mind. And Salt and Pepper didn't seem to mind when Meg and Sophie got on. And even when Tom and George jumped on too, Salt and Pepper still didn't mind. Just don't make any sudden loud noises, all right? Okay, yeah, yeah whatever. whatever. That's Humphrey again. Woo! Yeah, ride like the wind. Just as well he didn't come this way. He might have frightened the horses. Oh look, apples. Salt and Pepper love apples. Let's go in. Yeah! Shh! Not so loud. Bang! There must be ten billion trillion ants. How many are there in the whole entire world? You like apples, don't you, boy? Yes, apples are tasty. Now, Peppa, I want you to promise that you won't go home too quickly. And don't get frightened by anything, okay? Hey, I can see the train track from here. A train? A train. I like trains. Like Wait here. Like we train. can count how many carriages there are when the train comes. That sounds like a good idea, Molly. No. No, we have to go. The train's noisy and what if it toots its horn? It might frighten salt and pepper. I think we can trust them now. But even Farmer Hegarty said about the noise. So everyone got back on the horses and clip-clopped a little further to where Farmer Hegarty had said was as far as they could go. We should go back now. We could go a little bit further. Yeah! Just Come on, yeah. Yeah. No, look! Farmer Hegarty said we mustn't go near the freeway. Oh. Well, we've had a nice ride. But everyone, hang on, because Salt and Pepper go faster going home. Sure enough, the horses did go back faster. Like Farmer Hegarty said, clippity-clop, not just clip-clop. Hey! <laughs> I'm slipping! Hold on to me tighter! Everyone held on tight, but Salt and Pepper didn't go so fast that anyone fell off. Soon, Tom and George got off. Then, Meg and Sophie. And soon after Tom and George had jumped off, Millie and Molly were nearly back to the safety of Salt and Pepper's paddock. We're back, Farmer Hegarty. Right, all. And we didn't take them anywhere near a loud noise. We had a good time. Yeah, we had a really good time. Salt and Pepper let lots of our friends have a ride too. See, those two are very trustworthy. Huh? weren't frightened by the noise. Of course not. Salt and Pepper made sure you were all right. Ah! Hey, help! Get me out of here! Help! Oh. You'll be all right, Humphrey. My lovely bike's broken. I'll never get another one. It was the best ever. You can always come horse riding with us. Really? Would it... Are they safe? Oh, yes. Salt and Pepper are very trustworthy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what? What are you all laughing about? What's so funny? Come on, tell me.